Hey guys. So India is one of the most densely populated exotic Asian countries where you can see and experience a vibrant kaleidoscope of colors in all aspects of life. Only there can you see a cow confidently walking down a city street next to a Mercedes. Only in India do people boldly enter the murky, dirty waters of the Ganges to perform rituals of purification relying on the river's divine powers. Its history, social structure, traditions, and rituals still remain incomprehensible to the outsider. It is a well-known fact that India is a country of contrasts. In this video, you'll learn about the most interesting traditions, peculiar rituals, and shocking facts about this country. The Cult of the Sacred Animal The tradition of deifying animals takes its roots in ancient times, but is still deeply revered in the country. Although the punishment for insulting a sacred animal isn't as severe as it used to be, when a person who offended the symbol of sanctity was sacrificed to it, the law is still harsh on those who dare to disrespect any four-legged creature. They may even face deportation from the country. Each state has its own animal cult. Thus, to avoid getting into an unpleasant situation, you should always learn what animal is revered in a particular area and show the utmost respect towards the sacred creature. The main object of worship in the country is the cow, which can wander wherever it pleases and peacefully lie on a busy highway until it feels like moving. The cow is so deeply respected that everything associated with it is considered highly useful, sacred, and miraculous. And that doesn't only include milk. For example, cow dung is widely used as a remedy for all diseases. Hindus believe that it doesn't only cleanse the body of skin ailments, but can also cure all diseases, including COVID-19. Some people don't stop at that and even drink cow urine and rub it on their bodies, hoping for its healing effects on their internal organs and overall well-being. Take a look at how cheerful the residents of this village are when performing a worship ritual to one of their deities. There's nothing surprising about it. They simply believe that their god, Swami, was born from cow dung. And these courageous Hindu shepherds even allow cows to trample them with their hooves right in the street. They lie face down on the ground while the cows run over them at full speed. This ritual is believed to bring good luck and to make their wishes come true. Ritual Rites After the marriage ceremony, the husband and wife are bound together for life. Only the death of one of the spouses or the husband's departure to a monastery can break their connection. However, the wife cannot remarry in either case and remains a widow forever. In the past, there was a religious ritual called the practice of sati, where a widow would be burned on a funeral pyre with her deceased husband. This practice is archaic and is currently prohibited by the law in India. The most well-known case occurred in the state of Rajasthan in 1987, when an 18-year-old widow named Rup Kanwar committed sati after eight months of marriage. According to the Hindus, the ritual helps the spouses ascend spiritually and ensures their entry into heaven. The practice of sati was a part of Indian culture with its own specific characteristics and reasons. In the traditional Indian social structure, women, especially widows, were denied rights and status. After the death of her husband, a widow would be deprived of many aspects of life, including social position, economic independence, and even her inheritance rights. Getting burned with her deceased husband was considered the best solution for the unfortunate woman. To this day, the main method of burial is considered to be the burning of the body of the deceased, followed by the scattering of ashes over the sacred Ganges River. Another interesting fact is that Hindus believe that anyone who is cremated on the banks of the Ganges River clears their karma for the next life. The partially burned remains of the deceased are thrown into the river as if it's the most ordinary thing. The water in the river has long been recognized as extremely dangerous for humans, but the Indians drink it with reverence and, strangely enough, do not die. The most important, vibrant, 
colorful, and solemn ritual celebration in India is, of course, the wedding. Wedding preparations take a very long time and adhere to all the canons of the ancient, centuries-old traditions and more modern customs of the local population. In India, there are two types of weddings, arranged, based on convenience, and natural, based on love. In the first case, the couple is selected by elder family members, who consider their age, caste, and horoscope. It is rather common for the husband and wife to not know each other before the wedding. In the second case, the couple themselves approach their parents, seeking permission to marry. The main requirement for the bride on the eve of the wedding is her chastity. The woman must be a virgin. According to the ancient Vedic interpretation of the union between a man and a woman, the bride is the field, and the groom is the sower, and the sole owner of the field, and the only one allowed to sow seeds in it. The most significant achievement in a wife's life is giving birth to a son for her husband. In many Indian societies, traditional ideas about marriage and parenthood are preserved, so early marriage is considered the norm. About 40% of child marriages worldwide take place in India. There is also a tradition of marrying young girls to older men. Poor families hope to provide security and economic stability for their daughters this way. Cast of Untouchables Indian society is divided into social orders known as varnas or castes. This division originated in ancient times and continues to exist today. Hindus believe that by strictly following the rules prescribed by their caste, they can be born into a higher and more respected caste in the next life, thus achieving a better position in society. Ancient India originally had four main castes, Brahmins, priests, Kshatriyas, warriors and rulers, Vaishyas, merchants and artisans, and Shudras, laborers, peasants and servants. There was also a special caste known as untouchables or delites, which translates as oppressed from Hindi. According to one theory, the untouchable caste emerged in ancient times from local tribes that were not included in the society of the Aryans that conquered India. Untouchables were assigned dirty jobs, such as garbage collection, cleaning of courtyards and streets, sanitation work, working with leather or clay, limestone extraction, stone quarrying, cattle slaughter, pig farming, fishing, and fish processing, as well as washing dirty laundry. Untouchables were excluded from all social interactions, and members of this caste weren't even allowed to step on the shadow of a higher caste individual. Contrary to popular belief, Castes continue to exist in modern India, although discrimination based on caste is punishable by law. In current-day India, around 17% of the population belongs to the untouchable caste, which is about 180 million people. The majority of them still live in separate ghettos or slums, outside the boundaries of towns and cities. According to statistics, nearly half of delete children drop out of school due to the humiliation they face there. Delites make up the majority of the unemployed population, and those who are employed usually receive lower wages as compared to higher caste individuals. Although there's no need to provide a caste certificate when seeking employment or entering a restaurant, as India has been experiencing a gradual breakdown of the caste system over the past century, the attitude towards untouchables continues to haunt people throughout their life, influencing all of its aspects, including education, housing, employment, access to justice, and political freedoms. Languages People in India speak nearly 450 different languages and 2,000 dialects. A phrasebook won't be much of a help to a traveler because many of the local dialects and languages differ from each other significantly. However, most people know Hindi. Schools in India teach in 58 languages. Newspapers are printed in 87 languages. Movies are made in 15 languages. However, more than 15% of India's population cannot read or write. Slavery Unfortunately, slavery still exists in India. There are about 14 million Hindus living as slaves. This issue is kept silent and ignored for a long time. 
People in many countries around the world couldn't even imagine that slavery exists in modern India, which is made possible by imperfect legislation and the corruption of local authorities. The majority of slaves belong to the Dalit caste. They are poor, illiterate women and children who are forced into hard labor and prostitution. Debt slavery is especially common, which is when people work under harsh conditions without pay to repay debts with exorbitant interest rates. In addition to slaves, a large number of families with children live on the streets and rely on begging. An average person needs to work 14 to 16 hours a day to earn meager wages. The average daily wage is about $1.25. The government is trying to combat poverty by paying out benefits and promoting the development of agricultural areas, but the efforts have been unsuccessful so far. Vegetarianism In the Indian Golden Temple, several thousand free vegetarian meals are distributed daily to the poor and homeless. Poverty in India has fostered a vast community of vegetarians, so the majority of people in India consume plant-based food. Turmeric, coriander, mustard, cumin, cinnamon, cardamom, and chili pepper can be found in almost every spoonful of Indian dishes. It's no wonder that 70% of the world's spices are of Indian origin. If you want to try authentic Indian cuisine, it's best to visit a local family. Indian cuisine offers delicious dishes made from chicken, goat, and lamb. Preparing a dish takes several hours and requires a vast array of spices. This art isn't easy to master. There is a strict ritual of eating only with the right hand, regardless of whether one is eating with hands or utensils. One can only hold a fork or spoon with their right hand. The Hindus consider the left hand to be impure because they use it for cleaning after using the toilet. It isn't customary for them to use toilet paper, as is the case in other hot climate Asian countries. Indian Cinema When it comes to cinema, everyone immediately thinks of Hollywood. However, about 1,100 films are released annually in India, which is twice the number produced in the United States. Believe it or not, most Indian films aren't made in Bollywood. Although many people enjoy the vibrant, emotional, and expressive films of Bollywood stars, they represent only a small part of the Indian film industry. Almost everyone has seen a piece of Indian culture on screen. For a new viewer, Bollywood films can seem a bit surprising, to put it mildly. It's quite challenging to comprehend the sudden appearance of special effects in an ordinary drama such as the protagonist jumping 20 meters, for example. However, for Bollywood cinema, it is a common occurrence, and the people of India don't consider the movie's implausibility to be a drawback. They actually see it as a virtue, when the main character can fight gangsters, sing a song during a shootout, woo a girl, and dance in the process. This makes the hero cool, which means a lot in Bollywood. Indian society remains deeply patriarchal, which is why it is rare to see a woman in the leading role. Female characters in Indian cinema are usually replaceable and serve as additions to the male actors, the real stars of Indian cinema. They are the true giants of the Indian film industry, dominating the scene and appearing in almost all big-budget films. For ordinary people of India, well-known actors are iconic figures, and they are willing to go to great lengths to get an autograph of their idol. And that's all for today, friends. Be sure to give us a like, let me know in the comments the most interesting thing you learned in the video, and we'll see you next time.